and we should be here. I hope we are. Hello, welcome to Band of Badgers. Um, I'm just going to wait around to see if it actually works. I'm Dave, your host for this episode, and this is the Great British Brush Off. Now, this is going to be a bit of a, a, a special series. This we, we are playing. Well, not playing. We're not playing. We're painting. <laughs> we're painting. It's because I've got all my assembly in today's yeah, kind of play. It's because I've got all my skin. It says Dungeons and Dragons, and normally I say we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. We're not. Uh, we're painting Dungeons and Dragons frameworks, uh, which is a special. Uh, this is going to be a special kind of collection of episodes, a special series, uh, and for the very first time, if you've seen uh, our frameworks collection from WizKids. We've got an entire playlist of unboxings. We've also done an interview with uh, with JD, who is joining us. He came, I don't know why he came back, but he came back um, to actually do some painting. Um, so we're going to be building for the, for the very first time. Um, and I've, I've kind of cheated. I kind of cheated a little bit. So we're building and painting um, a selection of these minis from this new collection by WizKids. Um, and I mentioned joining us for the first time around a paint bot is... JD Wicker from WizKids. How are you doing, JD? It's good to ha good to have you back. Very well, thanks. It's good to be back. Cool. We had, we've had some technical problems. Everyone's a bit like, oh, I need to calm down. I need to get into that paint zen zone. <laughs> that, that's a good way of explaining away my uh, panic attack and how you talk me out of it. I appreciate that. I really. That's do. okay. That's okay. Um, and as always, oh, we're joined by. Guinness. Oh, Steve's got Steve's got a Guinness. Okay. As always, we're joined by Steve and his Guinness. So, <laughs> Uh, and apparently Sean is in the pub. So Sean, what, tell, what are you drinking? You on the Guinness as well? Um, so Those if, are the salty brews. So is that what, is that what he said? I can't see sandstone, it. Sandstone, sandstone salty brews is what he's on. So if you have any questions for JD, uh, or even for us, uh, you, can, you do shout them out and Steve will make sure that uh, you get the answers that you deserve. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> don't worry, um, you missed it. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're on Twitch. Um, so, but if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope that the information you find here is useful to you. Um, now, as always, this is a brush off. It might be a kind of a special brush off, but this is the brush off. And the brush off means that we will continue to compete for those extremely coveted gold stars. Now, at the end of this episode, it does mean that we will be asking you, the audience, as well as our guest artist here to judge us, me, um, whoever will win the very first gold star of our special frameworks series. So as always, thank you to WizKids, Vallejo and Redgrass. Now that all that gunk is out the way, we can start to relax a little bit more. We'll get the screens from one screen over the monitor and this other monitor and this thing over here. How is everybody doing? Are we okay now? Intro's done. We are out the way. Steve, how you doing? How's the drink? Uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's been a long week actually. It has been a long week. I, yeah. I, I have a door, which is which is positive. You family. Yeah. So if anyone wants to go back to our Scarlet Citadel and our Malevolence episodes, and uh, what else have we got? Which uh, which light? You will see the star the saga of Steve's door. <laughs> Steve's still here. Unfold yeah. across our many, many episodes. Many, 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 many weeks. Steve has been waiting for a door to arrive. And now the door is closed, Steve. So... Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, you can't see my in my creepy score to talk up it anymore. <laughs> exactly, in more ways than one. Um, JD, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Okay. Do I'm ready you... to get started. What are we going to do? We are going to paint, uh, or build. Sorry, we're going to build and paint. We're going to do that. All right. Um, and I'm likely to stick myself to something. So what we, I mentioned a little bit of cheating going on. So for the very first time, I've never built a model before. I've never built, I've never been one who's been into Warhammer. So I've never built anything before, but yesterday you can see that that's the, that's the elf, elf, elf ranger. <laughs> for probably for legal reasons, licensing reasons, they can't say Dritz. It is, it's Dritz. I say it all the time. It's him. So he had to be my first mini that I built. It took me um, about 30, 40 minutes. And I, I kind of cheated because I have the video. So where it says Dave building, <laughs> that is kind of, I recorded it. That is me putting this uh, Frameworks mini together. Okay. I, my original plan was to build one 
and paint one at the same time. I kind of given up on that idea. So I'm going to concentrate because it is so good. And we'll talk about that. It is so good. I thought I was going to do two. I'm going to do one. Um, so I'm going to paint Drist. JD, we were, we kind of have, have already announced who you'll be painting, but uh, you're painting the uh, human female w- warrior or human female fighter. I agree. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I love this figure. This uh, this sculpt this came out really well. Um, the concept art on this was fantastic. Uh, all around, I really like this one. Fantastic. And Steve, what have you got lined up? Uh, so I've I've pre-built the human monk. So that's that's the one I'm going to be painting. Yeah. Not in those colours. And I thought we was building as well, so I'm going to attempt uh, to build that during the show whilst I wait for my paint to dry, uh, which is the human warlock. Uh, there, there's some interesting bits on there. You mentioned that, but it is quite interesting where we have created a show where people watch paint dry. <laughs> Man, how, how exciting is that but you're not pioneers in that area no no um, people have been watching paint dry for three years now yeah it's 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 crazy <laughs> um so what, what let's see what else we've got now also for our viewers uh, who are watching this thank you very much for joining us on the right hand side of your screen you will see a selection of the uh, of the minis from Frameworks. We have uh, these renders. We have them uh, unpainted and painted, and that's just for you to see. Now, the majority of what we've got on screen, which is going to be ticking across, are the minis that we will be exploring in this series. Now, JD is kicking off our first episode with this, so uh, we'll see how this one goes. Uh, everyone else is booked in, so we'll get there eventually. So hopefully we'll we'll do some bits and pieces. So let's have a look at what all of this is going to be. So without further ado, I'm going to switch to our other cameras. Steve, if you can do your own camera. One, two, one, two. So we are all on screen. You can see here is my Ranger. He is so damn cool. He is so cool. And we'll, I've got a little story about that as well. But you can see how all the definition is just popping out of this character. It's so good. I mean, look at the rivets on those boots. That is just incredible. That that has managed to pick up all that detail. They are really, really detailed models. Now, while we're painting, we are going to be asking JD all kinds of questions about these minis. And and also, I think, before we came on air, um, Steve has finally started watching Moon Knight. (laughs) It's it's since finished. (laughs) But Steve, I Steve's I just started. Yeah, I don't watch anything until the last episode is out, so I can yeah, binge it if pretty, I choose to. Pretty much. Um, and I started watching Star Trek Prodigy, so we might we might talk about a few things. Um, so it looks like we already have a question. Go for it. any questions. Do shout them out. I am gonna see if I can play some tunes. If uh, you're joining us live, do let me know if the music is too loud it's just kind of a little bit of background chill music but uh, we don't need it too loud as long as you can hear us that is good but do let us know yeah right. so it looks like sean is asking if i have any designs on new creatures Ooh. um yes and no uh it's tricky right because i can't uh i can't basically commission a new miniature uh that doesn't already exist in a D property so I can't make new monsters for Wizards of the Coast and then say, oh, and we made a figure for that. Um, we we comb through all of the, the monster entries in the monster manual and, and every supplement that comes out, Mordenkainen's, uh, you know, Volo's Guide to Monsters, all of that stuff. Um, and then we, uh, we choose the ones that have the most visual appeal. So I hopefully that answers your question. I, I noticed on uh, your sites today, uh, you have the icons of the Realm Spelljammer miniatures advertised. Yes. <laughs> there, was a, there was a large. Yes, we video. do. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to put when, on when, my. When are, they, when are they releasing? Oh, see, the first thing you do is ask me a question about a release schedule on out of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so 
I'm gonna put on my extremely geeky uh, close-up glasses because, as you can probably tell from my beard, I'm uh, you know, getting a bit uh, on in ears, and uh, it's a little harder for me to see things up close anymore. That's okay. Steve goes RoboCop as well. We, we look, Steve is the original RoboCop, but it's nice that he's got a friend. So we've got RoboCop 1 and RoboCop 2. It's which is... nice that he's got a friend for other reasons other than just sharing magnified cops. <laughs> well, now you have something in common. So, there you go. I've discovered recently you can stick two lenses in, in the one I have. It's got a sound oh. flappy thing that you come down and see. The, the, oh. the times three and the times two and a half go absolutely insanely close. <laughs> right. Hopefully that's not too loud there in the background. That's my uh, paint carousel. No, that's fine. That's good. I wanted to ask, actually, do you... Um, have you got anything that you would personally recommend not a whiskey recommendation but I'm, I'm looking into getting some kind of stand because I've got you can't see it here but basically I've got a whole kind of collection of my paints that I'm using and they're just laying on the table but um, <laughs> I wanted something where I could just allow them to, uh, to, to sit or stand while I'm working on this um, there are a lot of uh stands um painting station kind of things yeah. uh made out of mdf uh it's laminate wood um that are really handy in fact i've got one here uh in my corner i don't know well you can't really see it but um it's made by uh vallejo um and uh it's part of a, a series right so you can attach other things to it you can lift it up you can lower it down yeah. add drawers i think um so but it's basically just got a bunch of uh slots to put your paints in and you can just pick the entire thing up and move it around as you need to okay. if you're one of those people who unlike me doesn't have a dedicated painting space in his house you you, you say you say that but um i have seen your de your desk yeah <clears throat> um so <laughs> earlier in the was it last week or was it this week the, the, it was this week. Was it this week. The time is just going this week. It's been a very busy, hectic week. So JD sent me a picture of his desk because he said, I'm just installing a new lighting system. I was like, go on then, send me a picture. Let me be jealous. <laughs> and it is amazing, his, his setup. He's got a lot of stuff in there, but you'll see the, the LED rig setup that he's got is incredible. And just to show, to share that with you, I have the photo here. Oh, yeah. So, uh, if for those of you, uh, Steve, if you want to look at Twitch, you'll see JD's desk. Basically, um, there it is. Yes. Look at that. So there is his, there's your painting stations. You have a variety of painting stations. You have a variety. You got brush holders. Paint oh, holders. nice. I, I like your paint carousel. So that's really good. And the light <laughs> rig, the light rig is excellent. Now, if, if you look at if you look at the picture on his monitor. That's the empty desk. <laughs> yes, <laughs> That's, that was me mid process. I was I was posting about my project while I was on Facebook, and listening to uh, to you guys actually. Oh, fantastic! You were it was a Saturday afternoon, and uh, you were playing Wild Smell the Witchlight. Fantastic! That's what we've been like. People to tune in, say hi, which is all good. But yeah, that that was uh, so that was your your brand new lighting rig. Now, how is how is it working out for you so far? So far it's working out really well. I mean, you can see there's hardly any shadow on this figure. Um, this one's been, I, I primed this one after I assembled it. So I'm doing even more cheating than, than either of you are. Yep. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, because I'm getting light from four different directions, there's there's really not the you know the downcast shadow that you would get with a, a desk lamp which is what i had before up until you know like i said last saturday yeah i've got a i've got a a, a small ring light to my left which creates some very deep shadows for me and then i've got a, an upper right softer light a much much softer light but it's it does the job but i would i would love something just just as bright that does that this was a really easy project, actually. Um, there's a I found a tutorial for this on uh, spikybits.com. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and it was uh, it was very informative. It had a very uh, a very useful list of all the components that I would need. Um, the list is a bit out of date now because I think that article originally appeared in oh gosh 2013 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just had a list of components and a list of links to how to find those components, and then a very simple tutorial uh, about how to install everything on your desk. And it's it's basically two six foot aluminum strips. Um, it's about a half inch uh, wide. Um, and I've drilled holes in the ends of those and uh, then bolted that <laughs> to my painting desk. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, the lights on this, uh, you can see, here's the, the aluminum strip in the foreground here. So the lights on this are just a strip of LEDs that mm -hmm. you know every hardware store sells. Um, and then you know, the, uh, the tutorial recommended getting a remote control unit. So that lets me do all kinds of fun stuff. Like let's let me fade my light. Oh, yeah. magical. And then if I want to get really wacky, I can, you know, cause people to have strokes. <laughs> <laughs> you got your disco strobes. Exactly. I've, uh, I've got one of them. Oh. Uh, Stroke? No, <laughs> one of them remotes. <laughs> came, came in my desk. Exactly the same nice. thing. Steve, I Steve, had to go out and buy mine. Steve's got a very nice desk that I'm very, very jealous of. What have you got, Steve? I've, I've got a Secret Slab metal desk. It's Whoa. really nice. <laughs> really, really nice. It was my treat to myself uh, <laughs> for my working from home setup. So how come we're not sharing pictures of yours? He hasn't, uh, he hasn't sent any, actually. <laughs> I haven't sent any, no. <laughs> uh, we should do that though. We should we should do that. every guest artist we have on now. We're gonna say right. Send us the headshot and a picture <laughs> of your desk. I think I've still failed to send the headshot. You can still send one. It's okay. It goes on the on the YouTube thumbnail anyway. Oh okay. It's easier to dis to distinguish. So the way I keep my uh, my paint palette here uh, and the camera place it makes it easy to uh, to do a palette cam. Let's see what I'm working with down here. Yeah, that's a good idea. I tend to work with them. Um, uh, sort of triads um, some companies call them um, where I'll have the uh, the base coat is one color and then I'll do shades in a slightly darker color and then highlights in a lighter color and I'll often uh, blend them a bit so that the transitions seem natural and that's what I'm doing right now Are you um, are you going green, Dave? Yeah, I am going. Uh, I think I've got two shades of green for his main cloak and clothing. And it's I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I tend to to stay on script, so I'm going to use what the colours are on on the uh, on the box. On the box. So we have a couple of shades of green. We have a couple of shades of brown. Um, some metallics, so I'm going to try and stick with that as I do without without going off script too much. Um, but it's already looking amazing. Okay, so if you haven't yet checked out our unboxings or our we had we had a, a chat with uh, with JD when we did an interview and we were talking about everything to do with frameworks and whiz kids do check it out on our playlist the um these frameworks have an incredible amount of definition and 
when it was funny because when I was putting this, when I was building this, um, which you can see in again the top left window, there's me trying to put the hand together. Uh, I had in my in the background, I had my D and D musical playlist going. So while I'm building Drift, it was very heroic music and building this thing and watching him kind of come to life was great and then there is amount again the amount of definition if you can see this here is just incredible and you see you see the picture i've seen the renders um and when you see the pieces on the sprue you think yeah they're, they're you know that's deep they're, they're pretty cut pretty deep but when you start to put it together and you cut them off the sprues, um, it looks incredible, especially with the background music. <laughs> it is amazing. So I was very chuffed with, uh, with the fact I did it. I was very nervous about building a model, but actually the now it's done. I mean, the dynamic pose on this guy is incredible. And of course, the variety. So you can choose different weapons and poses and heads and stuff like that. And um, I think we've already gone past it on the video, but there wasn't, there was a, I did one. So Dritz gets three heads. And one of the heads is in half. You get two halves of the head. And I did give up on doing that because I had a plan. I gave up. And then I went for the wavy hair because I thought I'm just going to go for the full billowing cloak, the hair in the wind. Um, dynamic arrow pose with the two swords tucked into his side and as I was putting the model together um, something that something that is actually you don't see on the packaging that you don't actually realize until you and I didn't realize when I unboxed it I only realized it when I started gluing the pieces together was you don't need to put a cloak on his oh. kind of his uh, leather armor is he's fully suited and booted so you don't have to put a cloak on so i thought well i won't put the cloak on but i'd already put the flowing hair on and i thought i've got flowing hair and then without the billowing cloak it, it looks a bit weird so i still put the cloak on and then the cloak because you kind of put the shoulder pauldrons on the top of the cloak first you attach two pieces and then it kind of it almost just clicked into place and it looked amazing. It just took the mini to a whole other level. Shoulder it pads. It the motion, doesn't it? <clears throat> I think that's, it's just that's the difference. Yeah, it's the shoulder pads. It's shoulder pads always always does. Yeah, with with the cloak blowing, it it gives you that sense of motion. Yeah, which I think is uh, important. So, so it goes, was, goes into that dynamic pose. I was really really pleased. But the fact that yeah, I really I was able to, to do it. I really have to give a shout out to uh, our sculpting team. Um, that's uh, uh, Randy Bernard and, and Ty Spurlock. They're the, they're the leaders of the team. Um, that they've been working closely with uh, our sculptors, including um, artists, sculptors at uh, Den of Imagination. Um, and they have really brought uh, Tom Babby's concept art to life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Tom's stuff is just fantastic to begin with, and then you know that additional layer of, of great sculpting just knocks it out of the park. Oh, I know. Um, the yeah. Den, Den of Imagination guys are they are they the people that did the um, sample paints that are on the site? Yeah, the tutorials. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really good. Yeah. We love working with them. So, JD, what has been from from uh, Wave One or Frameworks? What has been your favourite? What's been your favourite model, and what's been your favourite one to paint so far? I think you asked me this last time, and yeah, I'm pretty sure my answer has not changed about my favorite model, which is the uh, ogre. 
Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned that uh, the concept artist Tom threw in a, um, a nice little Easter egg where it's got the uh, uh, the bear skin cowl, the bear hide cowl, yep. uh, which is a throwback to, it's a little homage to um, Tony Pitolizzi's art in uh, second edition D&D. &D. Um, but strangely, I haven't actually painted that one yet. Um, I had uh, the dwarf fighter um, kind of on standby and I decided to just go ahead and paint him. Um, and that's been the, uh, it's been only the second one I've actually finished. Um, the first one being the Night Hag. I wanted to get that one done in time for Free RPG Day last year. The, the Night Hag is really nice. The the extra, again, we, we, we've mentioned this before in our different videos, but just in case you haven't, the audience, you listening now, just in case you haven't seen that, um, the Hag has some really nice extra pieces to it the uh um what's it called i keep saying cookie dough not cookie dough <laughs> the uh gingerbread gingerbread man yes the gingerbread man yes that that was just amazing to see yeah to that see was me. that was tom babby's concept art he introduces so much uh, of a sense of whimsy into these things. It's fantastic. It's like he's got, you know, character injectors. <laughs> Just plugs them right in there. You mentioned, um, coming back to Sean's question, right, right near the start, you mentioned the uh, not done original monsters. You're doing uh, from the D&D marketplace and you've done Pathfinder uh, battles and there's a collection of various various other minis and licenses that you put you uh, produce but is yes. there is there any time that WizKids have you done your own line of original monsters because there's no. there's so many bestiaries out there or monster manuals that other people come up with say oh look here's my new 100 brand new original monsters <laughs> Has yeah, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, and you know we have plenty of people that uh, just on my uh, on my team, um, the RPG team that um, yeah. that have a lot of experience with D and D, um, uh, and you know I, I'm sure I mentioned in the last chat we had that um, I used to work at Wizards in the yeah. RPG R and D division. Um, so yeah, I mean we've got the experience, but we don't really see a need to compete with Wizards of the Coast on this, right? I mean, they, they put out fantastic stuff. There's plenty of material there for yeah. us to work with. They're going to do it much better than we're going to. So, um, let them do really it a hard. high priority. Yeah, let them do the hard work. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, why would we, you know, try to produce, uh, I don't know, you know, our own monster manual, creature collection, whatever. Yeah. Um, we've got so much fantastic material to work with. I agree. And, you know, we're in the business of making miniatures. Um, we could, you know, create figures like that and just not provide any uh, stat blocks for them. But then that's kind of putting extra work on top of the, the dungeon master who decides to buy that stuff. Yep. Here, you're going to have to do all your home, own homebrew stuff. Steve, how is your, uh, what are you doing? The drunken master kind of guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing the, the human monk with the, uh, with the staff. Yeah. Uh, I've gone for the head without the hood and uh, yet to be revealed thousand punch arm that he's got. So there's, there cool. is an arm attachment. So you stick the arm, you stick, you, you get the arm and the sprue and you get a clear sprue. And the clear spur is is three repeats of the arm in different poses. So there's like the uh, the open palm, two closed fists in different punching uh, positions, and you clamp, you, you glue that to the outside of the arm base that you've got, and then you stick that to the to the model. 
so then I've, I've taped it up so that when I uh, spray primed this it didn't spray prime the clear plastic yeah so that when, once I've painted painted it partially I'll then take the tape off and be able to apply the inks like we normally do on the um, clear plastic uh, and give it that sort of magical effect so that's what I'm trying to do um, but it's, it's a really really nice mini <clears throat> So this will be the fifth one that I've painted because I did the ones for for Witchlight, and uh, I, I really like uh, the simplicity of this. But the the amount of detail in this is insane. On the staff, you know, like like you've got the um, uh, the rivets on on the armor and the boots. Mm -hmm. This has got metal rivets on on the staff. It's got rope. You can see the threads on the uh, on the forehead you can see creases in the forehead uh, it's yeah it's just an insane amount of detail even the the sort of trousers have got um, lines in them it's, it's, it's a, a textured uh, cloth it's uh, yeah the detail on these is is brilliant so I've, I've just dry brushed this uh, and hopefully some of that detail shows up because of, I've dry brushed it on camera Nice. Now I'm dumping some red on as my uh, as my shadow layer, my shadow ink layer. Because I'm going to do this in orange. As we've said, if you're um, if you're watching this live, do shout out if you have any questions for JD or for us on any of these products. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll just probably be talking to yourself. <laughs> but you can always leave questions in the comments below. That's fine. Might not get answers in real time, however. Yeah, you won't get an instant re instant reply. Um, I'm gonna go for the. What was I going to do? What was my plan? I was gonna, that was my leather. So, leather brown for armor and boots. JD, do you have any kind of particular go to colors? Hmm. Kind of depends on what I'm using, what I'm painting. Um, I've got a a light brown um, that I think originally came from Games Workshop. I think it's their XV88 is what it's called um, that I really like. Um, it's uh, it's great for um, putting uh, like weathering marks on leather. Yep. Uh, so that's one of my one of my go-to's. Uh, uh, I have a fair amount of uh, Vallejo colors that I use. Uh, I'm a big fan of this olive drab. Um, comes in handy for a lot of things. Uh, it's a good uh, woodland color. Do you have any kind of go-to techniques that you like to do, or? Do you yeah. let the paint do the work? <laughs> um, I have been pushing myself to do no, uh, to do more non-metallic metal, and I've gotten to the point where I yeah. do non-metallic metal more than I do regular metal. Um, and in fact, I'm going to do that with this one, but I want to get some of the uh, the leather stuff laid in first. But before I did that, I wanted to paint the face, and that includes painting these eyes. I'm just about finished. I just need to uh, kind of block off the areas on the eye where the uh, the pupil has bled into the the eyebrow. That's not good. My hand is not as steady as it used to be. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, I am doing a very particular uh, 
way of gripping these things. It's something that I learned a long time ago and it's really helpful. So I've got both elbows planted firmly on the desk to keep mm -hmm. this thing stable. And then I use my left hand to hold the miniature and my right hand is uh, braced on my left hand. That, that reminds me, I've been using just the top of this thing, the stand, and I haven't been using the base. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wonder why I was getting a finger, finger cramp. Um, I haven't painted since, since the last our last uh, brush off series, series. so uh, I'm very out of practice. But it is it, it the best thing that I've learned through doing miniature painting. Um, definitely all the useful advice that from all the, all the guest painters who come on, which is which is always fantastic. But um, it's just all those tips and tricks and their help and advice, but being, just being stable, having a set position is very cool. And it's very, I find it very lethargic, very calming. It is very zen to do. Uh, oh, absolutely. Painting. I wish I got into it years ago. What, what was your first, um, what was your gateway into miniature painting? <laughs> Tester's model paint. <laughs> I um, I got into miniature painting uh, because I was a big fan of uh, board games, and I wanted to design my own board game, but I needed playing pieces, so I went to my local hobby store, which was not as local as you know, they are now, um, and uh, I was looking at their miniatures, and uh, the guy behind the counter, uh, you know, pointed out to me that. Uh, there was a game called Dungeons and Dragons, um, and you know, wondered if I was buying them for that. So I got into that, and of course, then I had some miniatures. So I had to buy more miniatures to go specifically with Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot early on uh, about my painting, uh, partly from friends uh, who I didn't realize painted miniatures, um, but also from uh, picking up guides. Um, like there was a game that um, I think Ralph Hartha put out very early yeah. on that contained like 20 miniatures and a map and a very simple set of rules. And I painted all of those miniatures according to their, their included guide. Um, and that, that was helpful early on. And later on, I discovered uh, Games Workshop. Um, and, you know, they had a lot of useful articles in White Dwarf and, and that sort of thing. So I learned a lot from that. And then the internet came along. <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, it's a great source of information for how to paint miniatures. Yeah, there is an absolute ton of stuff out there, which is uh, in including us now. <laughs> <laughs> which is always great to see. So when you mentioned um, you got your uh, you got your job at Wizards working on working on Dungeons and Dragons. Was that the yeah. moment where you go, I, I, I'm, I'm here? Or did you actually make <laughs> games before you went to? Oh, I was making games before that. Uh, and in fact, when I started at Wizards, I was just in customer service. I wasn't working on games yeah. other than answering questions at all. I remember you saying, because um, you was in the right place at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just happened to be working late at night when one of the RPG staff came by and said, what are you working on? Um, had nothing to do with Wizards of the Coast at the time. I was just borrowing the computer. But, um, yeah, you know, an opening uh, came up in the RPG R&D department, and uh, I applied, and I got in. And that led to working on Star Wars, which is probably the thing I'm most known for at Wizards of the Coast. Right, I'm yeah, some letter. There we go. The um, I have a question regarding the frameworks. Do you, because it because they're sprues, and I, I hear different things from from different artists. Is is it better to prime them while they're on the sprues, or put it together and then prime it? Um, it, it, just depends on, it depends on 
what your taste is. Yeah, it, it really is, you know, just uh, is there any, how you like to do things. Is there any better way for um, for beginners? When it comes to sprue? Yeah. Uh, um, I would recommend the beginners uh, assemble their miniatures before they prime them. Okay, I did, um, I did it right away then. Of... That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, th this was a friend asking. Yeah, yeah, for a friend. For a friend. <laughs> yeah. For a friend. <laughs> for a friend. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you can prime on the sprue, uh, but then when you actually go to assemble it, you might have to file off some of the some of the the primer mm -hmm. in order to get at. Uh, the miniature to get it a, a place to grip uh, when you glue it together. Um, my biggest and most important piece of advice to anybody putting these together, though, is don't just clip out all the parts and then try to follow the instructions because the parts are numbered. Um, and if you clip them out, you're not going to know what the numbers are anymore. That's a problem. Yeah. Some of these figures, I mean, like, uh, the uh, the Elf Ranger, I almost said the D word there. Uh, the Elf Ranger um, uh, and the the Human Monk. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but when you get into things that have uh, multiple similar limbs, like the Drider, the the Beholder, it's a little more confusing. Yeah. Um, and that's especially true of some of the clear parts. Um, once you clip those off, trying to compare those to you know the image and the instructions becomes exponentially more difficult. Um, so I always tell people, leave those on the sprue until you're ready to actually attach them. Yeah, I, I did that with the um, the tiefling warlock. Uh, so the the tiefling warlock comes with uh, a magical effect that's got tentacles coming out of his bag, and that's assembled from three clear parts. Yes, and the uh, I managed, I've put the two of them together. And the third one, I could not figure out how it went because I clipped <laughs> them all off, cleaned them up, and then I thought, right, so where was that? <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, I mean, if if you want to do that kind of thing, if you are one of those kind of people that like to have everything, you know, nice and laid out, organized, and ready to go before you start, I strongly recommend taking a good, clear picture of the sprue before you clip everything off of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good tip. You know, and it's not like the old days when I started painting and, uh, you know, if you wanted to take a picture of your sprue before you got started, you had to wait, you know, three to five days for it to come back from the photo booth. <laughs> we got a, a message there from Dragon Dragonborn Bard. Uh, yeah. He's saying the WizKids... The WizKid stuff has completely changed tabletop RPGs. Having minis so wild, widely available in shops compared to back in the day of making paper minis or Lego proxies. I remember making, I had Lego. I remember, we did Lego once. And although that classic feel is very nostalgic, the beauty of being able to give that wargaming combat immersion to players for TT RPGs is the best. So there you go, we've got a, another fan of minis. Yeah. There was a question as well, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, hey, Jody, I heard you say your fave from the range is the ogre, but what is your favourite monster, not just from the range, but in general across TTRPGs? Um, so, yeah, I am actually a big fan of Driders. Um, I think I might have told the story about uh, the Drider encounter that uh, uh, Skip Williams put us through. <clears throat> when we were playtesting the monster manual for third edition, uh, I was I was there at Wizard still at the time, and um, I was in Skip's playtest group at played after hours, um, and uh, <laughs> I had a uh, I had a half orc barbarian, uh, and we went up against a drider, and uh, we uh, we lost pretty badly. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> So I've been kind of afraid of them ever since, and I, I kind of feel like other people, you know, uh, share that fear. Eight legs, two arms, weapons, spellcasting ability, you know.
what, what's your what, what's your take on how popular D and D has become? And it's you know this whole <laughs> fifth edition resurface. It's more widely discussed. We've got it in TV and films. We've got a new D and D movie coming out. Um, yeah. You know to, to think to think back when, as you say, you're working there all day and then playing there during the night as well. You just stay at the office. <laughs> it was often like that. Yeah, um, there were lots of lots of days when I would you know come in at eight thirty in the morning, uh, work until about five thirty, uh, run to the nearest fast food place. And then bring back dinner and and eat while getting set up for a game. Yeah. Um, and then you know the games would often go until 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So and I was back at the morning. You know the next day back at my desk at eight thirty. Then you know I'm sure the people that I used to work with are saying you were never at your desk at eight <laughs> thirty. <laughs> all right, all right, nine thirty. Did you ever do all night games? And then everyone, <laughs> everyone just said, bring a change of clothes. So they think you've been, you, they think you've gone home and come back again. Never did an all nighter at Wizards. Um, I think they left that behind in my, uh, my youth. Um, certainly did some games where we stayed really, really late. Um, and then on top of that, we got into the habit after a while of, um, after the game, we would go for late dinner somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have that to thank for diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that with work colleagues or is that uh, like a private game with friends? A um, little bit of both, actually. We had um, we had a regular group that started off with the members of the customer service team, um, and we would just play whatever game we you know happened to be into at the time, um, and then. Uh, as we as we moved around, two of us, three of us actually from customer service moved to RPG R and D, and and we continued the game and and had people from customer service join us, and then we had people from RPG R and D join us, and then as people came and went from the company, we had new players join from the company. We had players who had left the company mm -hmm. stay with the game or rejoin later. Um, so yeah, and eventually, even when I was uh, no longer working at Wizards and I was just freelancing for them um, back in uh, 2004, 2005, um, we were uh, <laughs> we were having multiple games, uh, various kinds, um, after hours in Wizards conference rooms. Um, you know, I would just go wait at the door, and somebody would come and let me in eventually. Yeah. But yeah, we had people from, from all over the place join those. Dragon Bard, did I answer your question about the uh, the favorite creature? There's no Dragon Bard. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, throwing the questions back at you. How come you can't type as fast as I can talk, huh? <laughs> I am going... I don't think, for the first time, I don't... Well, it's not the first <laughs> time. I don't think that I'm going to finish this mini. I have been so delicate with it. I'm trying to be so perfect. But I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it. But I will... I will persevere. I will Ever to persevere. Time. Yeah. It's funny as well because I'm noticing even more details now. When you start to study the mini, and like, oh yeah, that that one, that's, that's really <laughs> right. nice. That bit there, and, and then yeah. that part, and oh yeah, yeah. I just you know for the first time took a really hard look at the uh, the boots that this fighter is wearing, and there's quite a bit of detail on there. There's like cracked leather all across his boots. And again, you know, this is this is Tom Babby giving 
uh, giving his all in concept art for us. You know, he actually uh, sketched these so that they had cracks in the leather. Yeah, so it's amazing. How, how long is that process? Um, it depends. <laughs> um, more complex figures take a lot longer. Uh, humanoid figures tend to not take very long at all because, you know, you have the basis already laid out and, you know, uh, you understand the, the range of limitations of poses. Yeah. Um, you know, when you get to things like uh, dragons, for example, um, and coming up with a good dynamic pose for a dragon that hasn't been done a hundred times before, um, it gets tricky. He's, he's, uh, he's so... teasing now, Steve. He's teasing. <laughs> well, that, that was going to segue into the next series of questions because we did we did briefly mention that Wave Two was in production and Wave Three, I believe, was in design at the moment. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Although so I did it, actually it just good? receive the final uh, sketch for Wave Three. Ooh. Nice. When you say final sketch, you mean the, the, the whole the whole range? For Wave 3? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have multiple concept artists. Uh, Tom Babby is the yeah. primary uh, D&D Frameworks guy. Yeah. Um, and then for the other uh, properties that we work on, including our own, um, uh, we have different artists. We have uh, Jacob Walker. We have Tyler Walpole. Um, you can look those people up if you want to know what else they work on. Yep. Um, they are all really good artists. Um, we just uh, just tried out a new guy the other day. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, to get to the actual question though about how long the process actually takes, um, some of the artists work faster than others. Tom is, is <laughs> crazy overworked. Um, and so uh, he also has the you know, the largest portion of the D&D Frameworks uh, concept sketches that we have them do. Um, so uh, the process generally takes about, I'm going to say three months uh, from the time that we assign out the the concept art to the time that we get it all back in. Yeah. Um, and then the sculptors can take varying amounts of time on it. Um, so, uh, you know, we get them working as soon as the piece comes in and yeah uh so then they take about i want to say about the same amount of time about three months so you know there's there's six months um or maybe four depending on you know if things overlap uh, correctly um but then uh, uh tooling at the factory takes a good long time they have to lay out these sprues yeah. um and then shipping is always fun. Um, you know, we have we have people who specialize in, in just tracking shipments and making sure things get sent out on time and where they're at and all that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do that part of that job because that is a Gullian task. task. We, we were talking about um, the various waves and when we when we did the interview with you um a few weeks back we kind of we kind of teased what what might be coming and what could be there and in wave one we have two giants we have a hill giant and a stone giant so mm -hmm. does it does that is that a start of a trend that every wave we're going to get one or two more giants um quite possibly cool look at me being caging <laughs> <laughs> um although you know we'll we'll swiftly run out of giants if we do it that way so but i can almost guarantee you you will see more giants in wave two Wait, so it's just also are, are they um because the giants are there's a hierarchy literally because there's a hierarchy and also um, there's a height to them. So you, you, the smallest yes. giants are the hill giants, and then you've got the stone giants. Then after that, it's fire or frost? Uh, I think frost and fire are about the same size. Okay. Um, so I are think we frost gonna... giants are about 18, and I think fire giants are 19 feet. And then, uh, then what have we got after that? 
when the storm uh, is cloud dead, giant, cloud giant and storm giant. giant cloud giants i believe are 22 23 and storm giants are 24 so are we going to see that kind of uh sizing difference in the frameworks giants um <laughs> i feel like that's a trick question like, trying to get me to admit whether or not we're going to do storm giants but uh I would um, love storm giants. Well, certainly the giants will be different sizes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll see through the icons of the realm um, series, and uh, I think recently you, you did a revised edition of the Storm King's Thunder Range in different yes. sizes. Yeah. And is there any uh, plans to bring any icons of the realm minis to, to frameworks? Yes and no. Um, I'm sure that we'll see some of the more familiar monsters or um, maybe NPC types. But the thing is, we find that uh, this is especially true with Nolzers. Um, when people walk into the store and they're, and they're looking at those blister packs, if it has the name of the thing on it, it, it it's a little bit of a deterrent. Right. Um, because they think, oh, I don't I want a miniature that just happens to look, you know, like this. I don't specifically want this person. Right, yeah. 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 You know. And so when they bring that miniature home and you know they're showing it to their friends, they're like, Oh, I see that you're 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 playing a guy that looks like Mince Misk. You know? <laughs> or or Dritz. No, you know. <laughs> yeah, or 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 that that, that ranger. That drow ranger guy. <laughs> um I do. Yeah, I so do hope it's... we get a panther. You hope you get what? I, I want to get a panther. A panther? Oh, yeah. absolutely. I think we yeah. should have that. Or, or a little, little tiny, tiny model of a uh, of a panther. It's <laughs> like a like uh, a stuffed one animal like panther. Is, is, is you get you get like these really really tiny little bits. I've got black gloves on, so you're not going to see it, but. Uh, there's there's a little lantern that was in one of the boxes. I can't remember which box it was in, but I took it out and I was going to put it on the monk's base. Um, and then I really like that. You get these tiny little pieces on on the frames. And you just cut them out and use them anywhere. And I, I like to use them as as dressing on the bases. Not even with the many it came with. Just you know, I, I think uh, fits the, um, the sort of scene I'm going for. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, all of the all of the frameworks frames have those pieces. Uh, like for example, with the uh, the human fighter here, like if you can see this frame here in the screen, um, this is a spare piece. This is just a shield. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need to go on any figure. It can just be, you know, uh, part of your bits box for kit bashing. Crossbow up here, um, and then there's the uh, the water skin um it's this one the water skin is actually made for this figure but it doesn't need to go specifically on this figure you can put it on anything yeah so um and we're also we're leaning towards putting more on each frame um partly to fill up space um you know but also just because they're useful they're they're incredibly useful for exactly the reasons that you mentioned yeah. It's always nice to have a few extra pieces and sort of Easter eggs and things that you can use. Absolutely. When I painted that uh, that dwarf recently, and I really wish I brought him upstairs with me. Um, but yeah, I grabbed pieces from other frameworks frames that I had sitting around and just added those in because I think it adds character. Not to me, to the mini. I could probably use a little more character. But I find that gluing little pieces of plastic to myself doesn't quite do the trick. <laughs> That's why I'm good gloves on. <laughs> I, I've glued myself to far too many things. Now, are you using um, super glue, CA? Uh, or are you using I'm, something else? I'm using super glue, yes. Well, there's your problem. Super glue is really, really handy. Um, and for a long time, it was kind of the default for metal miniatures. Yeah. But when it's come to plastic miniatures, uh, I tend to use this stuff. This... 
Tamaya, Tamiya, extra thin cement. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, because this is made to bond polystyrene to polystyrene. Um, that being said, the uh, uh, the clear plastic is, I believe, ABS, yeah. um, and it doesn't quite have the same kind of hold. It doesn't, you know, molecularly bond the the two pieces of plastic together. Um, so I always use super glue for that. But yeah, I, I rarely run into the fingers stuck to the model with the uh, with the to my uh, model cement. So um, I, I have history with that stuff as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I, I I am a trained engineering draftsman. So when, when I oh, okay. did trade, I, I trained as an engineering draftsman, and part of the course that I had to do uh, was to learn how to make plastic models because. Uh, back in the old days uh, in engineering they used to make plastic models mm -hmm. scaled plastic models and you used to assemble it from from plastic you used to use the cement world uh, as a way of fixing all the nozzles to vessels and, and the pipes together and all the rest of it and the amount of stuff that i melted with for that cement world was unbelievable fortunately yeah, we don't fit on computers now, 3D models, and so I've, I've never had to touch a plastic model <laughs> since I qualified. <laughs> well, then you're going to be old friends with this stuff now for these. <laughs> so that, 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 that fills me with, with no, um, no, not any more empathy than using super glue. <laughs> I don't know what I was melting the miniature or sticking myself to it. <laughs> That's my two choices. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to admit that as much as I love using this stuff, uh, if you knock it over onto something like this plastic cutting mat that I have here that I used to paint on, uh, oh God, that's a disaster. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Shout out to Sean. He's just uh, subbed for 12 months. Thank you very much. Nice. And he's saying he has been benched. Yes, you've been benched. <laughs> Sean, Sean is a player in, in a, he's a badger in one of our other games. Oh, okay. Well, different games, actually, but different games. But um, uh, yes, you will be back, Sean. You know you have a top secret project. <laughs> we will be talking about that sometime next month. We've got to get the conventions out of the way. And then we'll be uh, ramping that up. Yeah, you said off air you was heading off to PaisoCon, uh, JD. With, yeah. with paint and miniatures. Are you, are you painting the PaisoCon? That is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Um, I have been asked to uh, host the uh, painting classes. Cool. Nice. Um, and that will include both formal painting classes and also setting up a paint and take where people can come by the the paint and take booth and sit down with our paints and our brushes and they will get a miniature they can paint. They can bring a miniature if they want. Um, and if they decide to paint one of their uh, one of the miniatures that we provide, they're more than willing. They're, they're more than welcome to take it home with them. See, hence the name paint and take. I I think they really need to do that over here. Um, we have the UK Games Expo, which is the, the following weekend. It's the weekend after PaisoCon. So first weekend of June. Um, three days in Birmingham NEC. So a huge venue, one of the biggest in the UK. Um, but we don't have anything like that. We have no one, um, like not whiz kids, but no one in the UK who does anything like that. And I think it would be great. We have playing areas where you can take a board game, sit down, put your flag up, and people will just come and join you. You have right. people like uh, Warhorn, who are organizers of gaming tables. But we don't have games on stage, like you see at like Gen Con, you might have the celebrities on stage playing a game for a couple of hours. We don't have anything like that. You have to make it yourself, which is why that's what something that me and Steve are gonna be doing. And then, it's just basically, most of it is just shopping. There's not a lot of publishers here showing off their stuff like we used to get 
it's, it's turned into a big shopping thing. Right. Um, but I think to, I think we're missing out. Now, as somebody who enjoys painting, I would say, yes, yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, you know, it's... Uh, I, I'm not sure whether it's uh, a case of the organizers just not uh, having the, the, I guess, will to put something like that together, um, or whether they're just not getting volunteers to run that sort of thing. Oh, I'd, I'd volunteer. If they if they were needing, to, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be talking to them uh, when we're there um, for some. We want to uh, start doing some panels. So, panels and live play. Um, but right. you've also got Comic Con is around the same time, which is in oh. London. So you've got the gaming hobbies up in Birmingham, and then you've got to go to London for Comic Con, which is mostly computer games and Critical Role. <laughs> critical Role? I've never heard of this people. Who are they? Yeah. <laughs> You asked earlier, uh, Steve. I think you asked um, about uh, how the game industry has has evolved and how gaming has evolved, and that's a perfect example. Um, you know, when I was uh, when I was first in customer service at Wizards of the Coast, Peter Atkinson, who was at the time the CEO, uh, uh, would say that his goal was to make games bigger than the movies, yeah, yeah, um, or at least you know as big as the movies, and it kind of came and it kind of went and it kind of came back and went again and so forth but Critical Role really kind of broke that ground for real yeah. you know having such a huge following um, of people that you know will show up at their events and who tune in every Thursday night to watch the show yeah that's amazing that is just stunning you know I think back to the days when I was first playing you know D&D and uh you know, we did not have that technology that would let us do that sort of thing. <laughs> if we wanted to record a game, we had to, uh, you know, find somebody that had a Super 8 uh, camera. And, uh, you know, then we had to sync up the tape recorder. Yep. But yeah, I just, I find that, <clears throat> I find that fascinating. I can only imagine what's going to happen in another 20 years with the industry, how things are going to change. Yeah. I, think we're I just... mean, there's, there's, there's so much technology, you know, there's, there's augmented reality, um, I guess virtual reality to a certain extent, um, so they can get the Quest headsets and things like that to, to interface yeah, on a shared platform. You also makes you think that there's going to be a massive wave of nostalgia though, and, and just going back to basics. Well, that that's always been the big pull of tabletop gaming, Mo it, as in, and we know it's D and D um, is the biggest hitter out there. But the biggest pull is it's a social thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And during during times of uh, isolation or struggles or um, recession, when money is tight. You want to surround yourself with uh, basically friends, right? Or like-minded people, or community, or something. And definitely, I mean, we know Fifth Edition was on the rise anyway before two years of pandemic. But I think the pandemic weirdly helped it because everyone just needed a connection. And luckily, like we're talking about technology, we had the technology. To be able to do that, yeah. People just yeah. Certainly, if the pandemic had happened, oh, let's say 1995. Yeah. No. <clears throat> it, you know that would have been a severe blow to the tabletop gaming industry. Yeah. I mean, more than than it was in yeah. 2020. I have finished assembly. Nice. Cool, let's have a look. Oh, you chose that sword. I love that sword. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I've uh, 
I, I, I don't do the plastic panels at the bottom because I, I like to base. So I've. Uh, I, I, I do the there. same thing. I leave it mm. like that, let that cure, and then I will prime that tomorrow. Because I like that one. Now I'm going to choose lots of juicy bits off of here to uh, dress the base. There's some really good pieces on here. There is an imp um, that goes in like a little summoning circle, and I'll see if I can get out on the base as well. But that went together really nicely. I'm, I'm pleased, and I didn't stick myself to it, which is good. Well done. Loads of catching up to do now, though, because you've been beavering away painting. I, I, I and really have done really much. good. I, I'm just, uh, I've really taken my time on this. <laughs> I, mean, I need to get some new brushes. Just. Yeah, I've, I've killed a lot of my brushes off doing dry brushing. I've really taken a battering. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can tell from the photograph of my uh, my painting table, but I have a rather large selection of brushes that I, uh, that I have for various purposes. I think you'll notice, maybe you've noticed, that um, when I go to put on contrast paint, uh, which I've used to put some shading on the uh, hang on, on the uh, on the leather parts here. Um, I use a completely different brush because this yeah. is my nice Kalinsky sable brush, <laughs> and they don't respond well to um, to contrast paint. They respond poorly, in fact. Uh, yeah, finding that out made a huge difference, and that's when I decided to just buy some new uh, sable brushes. Um, it's not that I have a particular preference for sable brushes. I use synthetic brushes probably just as much, um, but uh, I do find that um, the sable keep their point much better, at least if you take care of them. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. After they have a tendency to keep their shape, don't they? Rather than um, bristles sticking out in all directions. Right. I mean, speaking of uh, the brushes and things, with um, WizKids, you, you've got your own line of uh, paints on their way at I don't know if they're out. Are yeah. they going to be out this year, or is it next year now because of various delays and <laughs> international closures? Uh, no. Well, um, I just had a meeting about that this morning. Um, they should be out later this year. Yes. Fantastic. Do, are they going to come with brushes? Are you going to do your own um, line of Whiskey's brushes? Yes. Cool. Um, and uh, those are going to be manufactured for us uh, by Vallejo. Oh, just fantastic. Just paint. So yeah, the quality you're used to with Vallejo uh, brushes, that yep. is the quality you will get with WizKids brushes. Yeah, I do like my um, Vallejo, uh, uh, very, very nice. But yeah, we'll have, um, we'll have brush sets uh, for people that um, like to kind of just dive in. Um, there will also be brushes in the uh, the paint cases that we sell, which will be... Um, oh, cool. So you're going to do like collection of paints rather than... Um, Both. Like, every, like here's 50 paints, for example. You're going to do... Cool. It'll be, uh, it'll be both. Um, we'll have, uh, we have racks uh, that will uh, be in the stores. Um, It'll hold the entire line. Oh wow! Um, we'll also sell paint cases, um, which will contain uh, the the beginners kind of set includes thirty, and then the intermediate set includes another thirty, and that's the line. Yeah. Uh, but each of those cases will also include a brush. 
Oh, fantastic. Because it was nice with um, with kids paint nights, paint night kits. Yep. So you had, uh, you, you know, you get a, a selection of paints, but you had uh, one or two brushes in there. And it was just, yeah. it was just handy. Even if you didn't need them, you always need spare brushes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And of course, you know, I get product samples to make sure that everything is, you know, where it's supposed to be and everything looks the way it's supposed to. And those include the brushes. Um, <clears throat> and I still use those. I find plenty of use for those. Have you ever had to send anything back and go, no, what is this rubbish? <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I would, I would, I would be lying if I said that we didn't occasionally have uh, things that weren't quite what we wanted. But um, uh, that's that's not, not that a dragon. <laughs> that doesn't look like a dragon. <laughs> yeah, it says dragon on the package, but that's actually a half um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, nothing quite that extreme. No, um, but yeah, I mean, occasionally, you know, we we get complaints from. Uh, the public, uh, they will open something up and say, hang on a second, you know, my paintbrush came with the bristles all damaged. And, you know, we have uh, product replacement to handle the, the occasional case. Um, but sometimes also you get where uh, people will send in the same complaint and we'll see it everywhere and we'll realize something went wrong. Yeah. And that's when we have to go back to the factory and say, hey guys, um, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. Um, with a lot of that stuff, you catch it in the kind of testing phase, mm -hmm. you know, where they send you a sample and say, okay, this is what we're gonna release. And we can look at that and say, okay, everything's good, fix this, alter that slightly. Um, but uh, most of that stuff is, uh, that stuff that you just can't really anticipate. You know it's going to happen sooner or later, you just don't know when or why. Yeah. Um, uh, and so oftentimes uh, when you do see it in the public sector, it's because it's something that we couldn't have planned for, like uh, like a paint being particularly thick, uh, for example, in those paint kits. And that happens from time to time. And that's, that's a case of the paint maybe sitting too long in one place or not being agitated before, you know, it was uh, uh, introduced into the, the paint pots. Um, but it's always little things like that. Um, and that's easily addressed. And that's where we have a product replacement team. That's cool. The, you, you mentioned um, uh, dragons and this, the thing that's out at the moment um, is that, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's ugly. It's terrifying. It's monstrous. It is a, what is it? The, um, not the dragon overlord. What is it? It's a hive mind. It's a, it's a brain with tentacles attached to a dragon. Yeah, I know called? what you're talking about. And but it, it's horrible because it looks it looks like a jellyfish is riding on the back of this this dragon, <laughs> and the tentacles they're like they're going up the nostrils of the dragon, so it can control it. You no, know, get of course it's going to get right up there. <laughs> um, just How so it can you control a dragon. Come yeah. on. It, but uh, oh, what a terrifying idea that you've got something as powerful <laughs> as a dragon and this thing is just taking it over it's just controlling it yeah we need a whole story now about how um the heroes need to rescue the dragon <laughs> right that's a that's a perfect example of the kind of thing that we you know we first talked about when we came uh, when we came on here is um we we can come up with miniatures for things like that but they won't be anywhere near that cool yeah you know that's a great concept that wizards of the coast came up with that we can build a miniature off of you know so yeah they are they are the experts at this i can't remember what that's not a spell jammer is it that's a uh, fist bats fist bats uh, dragon Born Bard is is saying it's from Fist Bands. It's the Elder Brain Dragon. Elder Brain. Yes, yeah. that's right. Oh, the it's, Elder Brain Dragon. Oh, I mean, that that's a scary monster. <laughs> is it? 
<laughs> that is, that I is hadn't a, noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I think because last year the the the, uh, the older brain mini came, boy, well, it's, it's a very large mini came out, and that was ugly in a nice way. You know, it's it's monstrous ugly. And then just to, uh, just to make, how do we make this thing even more scary? Let's attach it to a dragon. <laughs> so so it can move around and just, but I'd imagine that, that, you know, like when you've seen it in films, when people get possessed and they say, oh no, I was in there the whole time. I just couldn't move my body. You just imagine the dragon is doing the same thing. Right. And the, you know, you're going to save the dragon and the dragon's going to go, yeah, I'm not going to eat you because... <laughs> You basically saved me. Have some gold. <laughs> you, you can take one thing from the horde. Well, you have a rosy-eyed view of uh, how dragons are. Yes. <laughs> it's the lion with a thorn in his paw. That's what it is. That's that's what you're hoping for. <laughs> you don't want the dragon to turn around and say, Right, you're down to your last <laughs> ten hit points, every character. You've run out of healing. Your cleric's in pieces and you've got no healing potions now you've got to fight the dragon go <laughs> <laughs> or at least run away from it we're heroes we don't run away <laughs> but those who run away live to fight another day yeah, run, you know, run away bravely <laughs> <laughs> brave brave sir robin <laughs> I am really liking this mini. I've changed up the color scheme a little bit. Um, I originally did oh, the boots sweet. a little bit because the boots on the artwork you probably can't, probably can't see on that. They are like a like a dark metal or a dark yeah, almost almost yeah. black. So he's like got he's wearing greaves. Yeah, um, but I've. I did them in the in the dark, and I didn't quite like them, so I've gone with the. I'm just going to use my leather brown, and then I can dry brush them over. And I've got I've got I'm going to use a a brass for those little those little pieces. But we are we are ten minutes from the end, so I'm definitely not oh. going to finish finish this one. Um, I there is one this piece one I'm going to do though. What um what else have we got on the? Are you are you allowed to? We're in the last ten minutes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna push you to tease. <laughs> you gonna pump me for information now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> as as well as frameworks, what other things can we expect to see from WizKids for for this year? Do you do like um? Oh. I know there's different lines, but do you do like oh this is this is stuff we're gonna release for Christmas? Is it? Do you do it uh, in that kind thing? of? Okay. Um, you know. Uh, we try to space out uh, releases so that uh, you know there's no there's no one month that is just heavily loaded. Um, we do try to get things out for specific uh, times of year, though. Like you know, we try to have Gen Con releases. We try to have uh, yeah. you know holiday releases. Um, so yes, there's always something in the pipeline. Um, I uh, I really can't be more specific than that. If it hasn't been announced, <laughs> well, uh, Dragon Lance has been announced. Now, whether we're gonna, I'd imagine WizKids is is not gonna miss out on Dragon Lance because it was such a big. Dra I think Dragon Lance is one of those things where it's always it's always been around. There's always been caramon and Raslin and Tanis and uh, Rumblebelly, uh, uh, who's from the Forgotten Realms. So we've got Dritz and the, um, it was the companions of the hall. See, last time when we talked, I, we were talking about Dritz and the, and the Forgotten Realms books. And I kept calling them champions, but they're not, they're companions of the hall. And then with Dragonlance, you've got a different team. And it's kind of like Marvel and DC. You've got these different <laughs> settings. Um... And have you seen the latest, well, the, the teaser trailer for Dragonlance that Wizards made? I have. That looked amazing to me. More amazing than Spelljammer. Because it put it like, what has happened? What timeline are we in? Is this after all the stuff that we grew up reading with Margaret right. Weiss and Tracy Hickman that, that they did? Um, 
and the way they say it like we're not we're not fighting for king we're not fighting for gold we're not we're even not fighting, fighting for glory for, yeah we we're fighting for ourselves and for it just other. looks like wow we're in a proper wartime situation now this is mm -hmm. dark and i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens I, I was uh -huh. a big fan of Dragonlance, and I've, I've even dug out my old copies of the <laughs> Dragonlance um, adventures. Because I, I remember that uh, those those novels when they came out were a huge deal yeah. to us, because nobody had done anything quite that big before. Um, you know, <laughs> making games as big as the movies, and you know, in in my lifetime, they were, hey, they uh, they're now as big as books. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of interesting uh, little anecdotes to tell around that. Um, that video, if I recall correctly, that video was put together by a friend of mine, um, uh, Alan Duong, uh, who I used to work with uh, in the video game industry. Um, he would be my—he would be the uh, the main engineer for all of the voiceover work that I did for uh, our video games. Yep. Um, and uh, Alan. Uh, Alan is also uh, one of the producers of the movie Paper Dragons. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, yeah, he uh, he worked on that, if I recall correctly. Um, and that uh, that voiceover was the actress, and I'm probably going to utterly mangle her name, Shore Agadashvu. Oh, from um, The Expanse. From The Expanse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said that was uh, quite an honor to work with her. She's got an amazing voice, actually. Oh, she does. It is just, her voice is just amazing. <laughs> it's got so much gravitas. <laughs> it just, it was, yeah. I, I, that, I think that hit home more than Spelljammer. Spell, <laughs> Spelljammer was the kind of Guardians of the Galaxy this is this is fun <laughs> and dragon lance just starts dark it, it just went straight in and said this is this is what you're getting <laughs> so in the summer we get spell jammer nice and fun and space crusades and things like that and then yeah winter is coming we're gonna have war <laughs> I was never really able to kind of wrap my mind around uh, the space aspect of Spelljammer. So when that came along, I was in a first edition D&D &D game um, that had been going on for a long time. And uh, I think the DM wanted to kind of introduce that, those elements. Yeah. But I don't think we ever really uh, clicked. I think for some it, it's a step a little bit step too far because you're playing a fantasy game right and to some extent you know you warrior Conan the Barbarian basically and then suddenly here's a here's a galleon ships that can fly through the stars which is more Ulysses that kind right. of um, a different almost Star Wars in a way because Star Wars have lightsabers instead of swords but they're still swords we, we can relate to what they are but it's in space and that's how right. that's kind of how it felt for me. Um, Dragon Lance and yeah, for, um, oh, what was it? Greyhawk. Greyhawk <laughs> was where I started, um, and then I just think we were playing Greyhawk. That was great, and then for some reason, Forgotten Realms really took off. And it's probably just because Wizards probably focused on a a different thing. And then it was all about Forgotten Realms. And it's nice that we're kind of, we've gone, with 5th edition, we've gone back. We've gone to Baldur's Gate. And we had mm -hmm. we had a computer game, Neverwinter Nights. So all of those, and Baldur's Gate, the computer games, I, I, I played those. Before that, it was um, Eye of the Beholder. One, two, right. one, one, two, one, two, three. Uh, and Icewind Dale. Pool of Radiance. Yeah. Oh, Pool, I love Pool of Radiance. That oh, yeah. was proper. <laughs> that was proper game. And before that, <laughs> I had 
Before that, it was Dungeon Master. Dark Suns. There was the Dark Suns one as well. Dark. See, I never liked the Dark Suns setting. I think no, because you I had was the computer game. Planet, yes, have. the computer game. Yes, but as a tabletop setting, it was like I said, Conan. So it was swords and sorcery. It was uh, a bunch of companions traveling across the world, doing heroic deeds. And as you go up level, it just meant that you became more powerful. And you, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, you first game you're fighting bandits. By the time you end, you're <laughs> fighting dragons or giants or gods or whatever. Who all happen to be bandits. Yeah, all happen to be bandits. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same road. <laughs> yeah, it is. You just it's, go up and down. A, it's cops and robbers, but do you think? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting to me that uh, those things came along um, because... Most people that came to D&D early on, uh, back in the 70s and the early 80s, um, they had that common background of uh, Lord of the Rings. Yes. Um, and so there's a certain expectation that games, uh, D&D campaigns, are going to be a lot like that. Um, but a lot of us, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of us hadn't actually read any Tolkien. Hmm. Um, like my introduction to fantasy was Conan. Yeah. Um, that was the stuff that I was used to. Uh, um, Robert E. Howard, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, you know, that kind of fantasy, that kind of level of fantasy. And that was the kind of stuff that I craved, right? Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> I start thinking about all the different genres, the subgenres of fantasy, um, and how Wizards of the Coast has found a way to cater to all of those interests. You know, if you like this about fantasy, you're going to like this setting. If you like that about fantasy, you're probably going to gravitate toward that setting instead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I utterly respect that. I think that's a great approach. I think it gets a lot more people into the game that uh, would otherwise not consider it because they are only familiar with, you know, A. a. Merritt, uh, you know, as an example. Um, and you just you don't get that that kind of experience in core D and D exactly. Um, and it's interesting to see how much D and D has evolved <clears throat> because first edition, you know, a party was 24, 30, 30 characters. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it was like having you know several superstars in their entourages in every single dungeon, and you know, hey, let's all squeeze into this ten fight. 10 by 10 room and fight this dragon. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's good seeing that um, that D&D has grown to the point that it's figured out a way to keep your gaming group relatively small mm-hmm. um, so that people get more focus time, um, that the rewards aren't scattered as far uh you know so when you defeat a monster you don't have to split its treasure 30 ways yeah um you know uh and the mechanics of it are just so much smoother now than they were back then you know having to deal with 30 attacks (laughs) in a round from just the heroes uh is a little problematic let's be honest you know But, you know, this is the grognard in me coming out. Well, we are over time there, guys. We have... Paint on the palette. <laughs> <laughs> it is... Well, we started ten minutes late, so... It is, it, that, that is true. Um, it is... Paintbrushes down. And then we can get a closer look at what we've managed to do. All right. Paintbrush down. <laughs> So, you, the audience, thank you for staying with us. Thank you to Maverick2. Um, you <clears throat> subscribed for nine months. Thank you very much. Um, it, Dragon Ball says, 5e is, is, 5e is probably as streamlined as we are going to get for a while, but that's not a bad thing. We are at its zenith. Very true, I think. Uh, thank you very much. Dritz is looking good. 
nicely done. Um, so we're going to go around the, around the tables. Now, you, the audience, who are watching us live, um, and if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, put it in the comments below who you think should have the gold star. <laughs> Me. Um, <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna allow the audience a chance to vote on uh, me and Steve on who should get the gold star, and we'll come to that in a sec. But JD, let's have a look at what you've got uh, done so far. How uh, talk us through it? All right. Well, uh, I've got the flesh stones laid down, um, and I actually uh, took her shield arm off so that I could get to the the parts underneath here. Um, I'll do that all later, but. Um, yeah, got the flesh tones down, got all the leather uh, laid out here. Um, and I'm doing a two-tone shield or a two-tone uh, backpack. So it's got lighter leather up the center. And then actually, why don't I use a thing that was designed for pointing? There we go. Yeah, so Perfect. lighter leather up in the center and darker leather on the sides. Yeah, nice, um, nice. Got her, Got her boots going on there. And then had I had time, I would have started doing some non-metallic metal on these bits in here and on her greaves and her helmet um but yeah that's that's where i got that's looking nice it is and it's pretty good we mentioned that in, when we were ch chatting the other night the um the human female fighter there the helm the middle section in her helm is actually uh like a, uh, like a red it's a dragon. dragon yeah it's just gorgeous it's a great design really nice to see Okay. Yeah, I might paint that as a gold dragon, but we'll see. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to put some shifter paints on there. Oh, there you go. Shifter paints. All right, okay. let's, see, let's see yours. Go ahead, Steve. Over to you. Um, I'm going to pin myself on once I'm going to see it. I'm not going to see anything works. There we go. Uh, so I obviously didn't paint very much because I, I assembled. Um, one as well, yeah, get that right in there. We go. So I concentrated on, on finishing the robes, which I've I've done orange. So I put that. Uh, I did I did a, a dry brush of three greys, uh, and then I did a red ink wash, and then I've just dry brushed on uh, some orange and yellows, uh, finishing with with pink, which I um, had to believe is the the highest high point that you would go even put white on there because it glows out you put pink on it apparently it, it uh, does so look that. like so much like it's cloth like you've just got layers not layers and levels but just it's all just bunched up it looks incredible uh, there are lots of details i've got to go back over like yeah. some of the scarves i'll do in slightly different colors i've got to do the rope around the waist in, in brown to um you know, put some more contrast in there, but I'm I'm really pleased with how how the gloss turned out. So there's there's the back, and oh yeah, yeah, some more detail on the slightly bright <coughs> at, the, at the shoulders to try and pick out the light. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, so I, I've just mixed up my skin color. So that's the skin color I'm going for, and uh, and then I will lay on layers of shade. You can ignore. The, the masking tape I have on the arm because I've not painted the arm yet uh, that will come off and then that would reveal the clear plastic underneath uh, for the uh, the three fists which I was going to do in, in blue ink um, nice but yeah cool that's really that's, nice that's, that's where I got to and and for those of you who didn't see earlier this is the one I assembled during the show which is why I was so far behind with painting <laughs> that is is the assembled mini uh, really nice uh, so this the, is the, the human male right. warlock isn't it this mm -hmm. is the human male warlock uh, so we have the staff what's, what's the Dan Aykroyd film uh, the cop show I just remember seeing where they'll turn up to, to a dragnet uh, dragnet that's it yeah yeah that reminds me of dragnet <laughs> for some reason <laughs> the goat's head Scene. Goat said the, the goat yeah. pants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I think we needed some context there, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Cop show. I was, I was getting there. I was trying to figure. You get there, yeah. Um, and, and then, you know. and then the sword is actually in clear plastic, which is, which is really good. So you have the option of, um, I can tape that. 
and that, do the that, sword as, as a magical blade. The light that's the summon blade. sword, isn't it? it yeah. Yeah. It, it looks great how, like, you've just... The, the, the plastic, you've just got that piece missing. Yeah, there. Just before yeah, the tip. really good. Really <laughs> nice. It is, it is a really nice me, and that one was really good to put together as well. And I like, like, you know, you get the, the holes on the cloak, the yeah. detail on it is great. So there, there's, uh, there's my assembly and and my paint. Well done. Who's going to win the gold star? Um, I'm, I'm going to ask the, both of you actually if uh, if you're able to finish up your painting when you do, is there's no rush. Um, send some photos. And we'll, we'll, we'll stick them up on socials. That'd be great. Um, uh, just to prove there is a gold star, there's one on the screen now. We'll we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, and here's mine. So I went with uh, the uh, sorry the drow <coughs> drow ranger <laughs> uh, that everyone knows and loves because he is so good, so cool. But look, even in I've only got one cut on it. I haven't done any um, like shading or different shades of green. This is the definition that's that's how defined this mini is um it's not finished but i will finish it it is incredible amount of detail on there i think pretty much everyone knows now but i am a big fan of drift you've, you've done that really well it's been weirdly it's been it's um so these these aren't pre-primed so you do have to assemble and then prime, but it's really just taken the, it's really held the paint so much more. And again, it's just, again, that definition is superb. Look, you can see all the rivets on these boots, look. Yeah. So I'm gonna paint those in brass. You got various, uh, there are various belt straps as well on his chest. I'll see if I can zoom in. There you go. I can look hold how it. easy that is for you. <laughs> <laughs> reverse pinch <laughs> um, and you can see the swords so I just had to s simply glue those to his hips but look at those look, he's got it is and it look at those cheekbones he has cheekbones <laughs> and eyebrows yeah, yeah he's got the eyebrows well. has teeth. Yeah. The individual teeth yeah so I did, um, yeah, I've, uh, I'm going to finish painting this one up. Um, I like yeah, the green that you've is... chosen for the, uh, for the leaves on the boat. That looks cool. Yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to do that, but I think it, it just pops that much brighter colour. It, it pops much, much easier. Is that Escarpino green you've used there? The livery green. Livery green. Livery green. Okay. For the I'm a sad, leaves. sad person. But the... The cloak and most of his outfit is sick green. Sick green, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. <clears throat> so um, don't be put. I don't know why they call that sick green. That is such a great color of green. It is. It is so so nice. I was originally going to go with dark green, but I ended up using that on his legs. But mm -hmm. I, I think that would have been far too dark if I had done that. So uh, I'm glad. I, I'm glad I made the right choice. He did. But, yeah, he's um, got a really nice color selection. So there we go. So now you as the audience, uh, although you're 10 seconds behind, you get to throw into chat any kind of thing. Who do you want to win? Uh, the gold star for my first episode of Frameworks. We will be doing more of these with other guest artists joining us. Um, we're going to do a variety of the Frameworks Wave 1 minis. But shout out. Is it me? Is it Steve? Is it me? Or is it me? Just, uh, <laughs> just, let, just let us know in chat. But JD, overall, the choice is yours. You can listen to the audience or you can listen to me. It's, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> but we, we have no expense spared. We've, I've, the button is on. The gold star is now whizzing around the screen. And where it stops, nobody knows. It probably would be me. <laughs> well, you know, if I had to vote, I would say, uh, which one of you has the ability to invite me back? Me. <laughs> and then yours is obviously so much better. Yeah. <laughs> but only, only, only a little so much better, you know. Oh, so we have we have Maverick too saying sticking with Alternate Dave Builder, but Dave Building is the Primer Star. We got Dragon Board, uh, Dragon Ball Bard says Dave gets the star for his color choices. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Eeny meeny miny mo. Which one's it going to be, Jamie? 
Oh, uh, sorry, Steve. I actually really like the color choices on the on the, the Elf Ranger. Yeah, it does. It is good. It is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always amazed when I win. Um, I'm blushing like mad. But thank you very much. It's the first guy to star. Um, I didn't get any last season, I don't think. Steve won them you all. You did. You did. No, you did. I got you half did. a star, didn't I? No, you, I think you got one star. <laughs> I got one star. one star. Yeah, it was the first, I think the first episode you got one. Oh, okay. yeah, but I, I gotta say, I am looking forward to seeing what Steve does with the that monk when I finish that one. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely gonna finish that. There's so much detail in there. Uh, so Mavericks, yes, we're kind of, this is a special series. So we're going to do uh, five or six episodes. We're going to do keep it on frameworks. And as always, the usual routine of we've got um, various guest artists joining us. So yes, not exactly a full season, more like a nearly summer special, spring special. Let's say, <laughs> let's say that. A mini series. Oh, dear. there you go. Oh, was, I never thought of that one. He's he's taught me there. <laughs> Bad jokes. Um, JD, thank you so much for joining us uh, again. Uh, your absolute pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, uh, I I will do what Steve's done. I will just put oh here we go. Big heads back on. Um, thank you so much for joining us. That was a lot of fun. Uh, these minis are fantastic. To you, the audience, thank you for watching. Remember, we have a playlist. We've done uh, unboxings of pretty much the entire Wave 1 Frameworks range, uh, as well as a full-on interview with JD, all about his past experiences, his career, uh, working at Wizards, working at WizKids, the creative process at WizKids, how, how you get, if, if you're an artist, how you could get picked for WizKids, that kind of stuff. Uh, everything is there, so do check us out. Do subscribe, any subscription you can do always helps us. So. Uh, that's it. And look look forward for some more stuff on WizKids because there's a ton of stuff coming out. He's already <laughs> confirmed. Is. Wave 2, Wave 3. So there's more. I got him to confirm Giants. There's more. There's more. What else? Um, actually, last time in the interview, I think we teased we teased the possibility of dragons that were coming as frameworks. Um, and I got really excited because I started talking about uh, gelatinous cubes. Mm -hmm. Could we see a gelatinous cube Framework. Well, that's the whole point. You can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you know you could, you could, you could like I don't know. Could they be different? You just get, you build a cube. You could put different things inside. You put things outside. What an interesting design challenge that yeah. you're presenting that we might have already solved. Yes. Yeah. I'm just. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, JD. It's always a pleasure. Steve, thank you for... What did you do, Steve? What... You just hang around and paint, didn't you? You got your Robocops on. <laughs> you do this. He built his miniature, <laughs> and then like the two of us who just, you know, painted miniatures that were already assembled. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I've painted the mini that I'm going to paint tomorrow. I've uh, assembled the mini I'm going to paint tomorrow. I mean, this is this is a normal evening for me, painting. Painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. But, um, <laughs> Do, and it, are frameworks out now? Oh yes, oh yes. So, Hopefully, do, you have them in, in 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 your country as as you know as well. Uh, well I'm guessing that you got those. They're stuck in a lot of places. Oh, yeah. Are they really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's because they went really fast, or because they under ordered, or what? That yeah. would be a good question to have an answer to. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Definitely. It shows there's demand. Yeah, again, these have been, uh, the fact it's a model, um, so just another close up, go check out the unboxings, but yeah, you get variations, you get alternate options, so do go, uh, Steve has just put the link into live chat, so do go check it out, but we're going to call it a night there folks, until that time, we'll see you again soon, stay safe, be good, bye bye.